Draw Nature. Hi, and welcome back to Let's Draw. It's a beautiful day on the Sheep River, which uh, runs through Okotoks, where uh, I live. My wife and I just decided to come down here for a swim today, and uh, it was very refreshing right here in this uh, beautiful pool. And, uh, and uh, I've noticed this summer, uh, in any river that I go to or lake, there seems to be an abundance of dragonflies this year. Now the dragonfly, uh, what I learned this morning was that um, it is probably the most effective predator on earth in that uh, it catches 95% of the prey that it, uh, it goes for. And I think that it has something to do with its very large eyes that uh, have uh, multi-facets on them and uh, as well they can fly in any direction at will so let's draw a dragonfly if this is the first time that you've uh, done any drawing with me uh, you don't need a lot all you need is a pencil an hp pencil like this you can get at the dollar store you can get about 10 of these for a dollar um, you might want to invest in a fancier sharpener like this. This is a, uh, I think it's a Stadler Mars sharpener and you want to keep your pencils sharp all the time. And I'd like you to consider investing in one of these kind of erasers. This is called a kneaded eraser. It comes in a little package like this from uh, the art supply store. And you just take it out of its packet Hopefully it's fresh. You don't want to use, uh, you don't want these to get stale and old and hard. And you just with the warmth of your hand, you're going to mold it like this. Kind of knead it. That's why it's called a kneaded eraser. Knead it like uh, bread dough. And this is going to enable you to erase small details and almost use it just like a, you would a pencil. So, we can uh, begin drawing the dragonfly. Okay, so today we've got uh, some terrific photo reference to work from. These dragonfly photos, uh, many of them for my videos, have been taken by my good friend uh, Ken Richardson. And uh, he's just an amazing, amazing uh, nature photographer. So I'm gonna, um, looking from the photo that he's taken of a dragonfly here, I've chosen this one. It looks very much like a, a helicopter. And I'm going to draw the shapes, kind of the big shapes first here. Oops. And I want this all uh, to fit on one page. Now it's very important to work from really good uh, photographs. Ideally, you want to take them yourself. And that way they'll be as original as possible and you'll appreciate them more because you were part of the experience of um, interacting with nature. Okay, hopefully I can get this right the first time, but I've got kind of the rough proportions. I'm drawing this, it's kind of stick-like coming over here and this top wing is going to come out like this. Oops. Uh, wing behind it. Now there were so many dragonflies, like I mentioned before, everywhere that uh, went this summer. And I'm sure that you probably noticed it as well if you went out uh, camping or you were down by any bodies of water. And you know what? The dragonflies are always a uh, tell us that our um, 
water systems are thriving. They like clean water. They really help us because they, um, they eat a lot of mosquitoes. Hopefully I can fit this on the page here. I'm going by, if you can see all these shapes around the dragonfly and look at your photograph, that's gonna, those are called negative shapes. And again, this photo is very clear. It was taken by my friend Ken. We've, Ken and I have been friends uh, since we were five years old. We grew up couple doors down from each other in a in a community called uh, Varsity Acres in Calgary. So we used to spend our days going down to the pond, ponds, a uh, gravel pit uh, down in uh, down in Bowness in Calgary and uh, we would go there all summer. Um, I don't think I had I think it was frustrating for my mom. I never had a dry pair of pants because we were, my, my, my mom would ask me, well, where did you and Ken go today? And we would have been wading in the ponds, you know, making uh, rafts and whatnot out of old doors and, and uh, fishing for suckers and probably catching dragonflies as well. But anyway, Ken and I have been friends for that long. And uh, the other thing that we've been doing is uh, we've been drawing for 50 years. He's an artist as well. We went to art college together. And um, the pictures that I've showed on this video of the boys with the dragonflies on their, the one dragonfly on his face is uh, Ken's oldest son, Sean, who's now a animator in uh, Vancouver, but that's an old picture of him with uh, the dragonfly. And so his kids are in these photos and just amazing, amazing photographs. So anyway, both Ken and I have been drawing for uh, half a century. That's how long we've been drawing. And uh, this is what these videos are all about for me is to for me to share my love of drawing with you because I know that if you're watching this video, you're probably like uh, Ken and I were in that uh, you love nature and you love drawing. It's very relaxing. I, I absolutely love drawing um, whenever I can. It's very relaxing. I've got a can of ginger ale in front of me today. In the winter months, I'd like to drink uh, coffee or tea when I'm doing this. And wow, look at that. You can actually see the dragonfly is smiling. They have, they have these uh, marvelous little faces and expressions. If you, if you ever get a chance to examine one up close, this looks almost like a nose of a cartoon character in a mouth. If you look really up close, these look like uh, eyeballs almost. Now, if I was painting this in color, it would. The colors uh, are quite beautiful, but we're going to get really good at uh, drawing. And fortunately, uh, Ken's photographs are so good and they're so clear that uh, you have great reference to draw from. That's what uh, we call it, or what we learned in art college is, we call it reference. And uh, we had a, we had an art teacher, really great art teacher uh, named Dennis Budgen. And Dennis was a uh, incredible, is an incredible uh, illustrator. And he uh, always used to say, you know what? Your art is only gonna turn out as good as your reference. So make sure you have good reference Wherever possible, it should be original. Try and take it yourself. Um, Ken and I, I like uh, using uh, his photographs are so good, but uh, I'm gonna get some new lenses for my camera 
pretty soon some close-up ones so that I can start doing this uh, taking better pictures you know there's so much to uh, learn always you can take better pictures whatever so they've got these little designs going all the way back on their uh, body now this summer was amazing I think you know I had dragonflies uh, landing on me and I'm sure you did too and that's a wonderful uh, wonderful uh, feeling to uh, interact with uh, nature and it seems like the dragonfly although they're they're a very effective predator like I said you know if they go after a mosquito they're going to get it or another another uh, insect but um, they also seem to be very affectionate and curious and uh, their wings are just magical the the designs of the membrane of their their wings I suppose it's easy to see that uh, if you're interested in fairies like Tinkerbell or whomever on Walt Disney that it's easy to see that influence of the dragonfly on uh, that the other thing about the dragonfly that I learned if you go back about 420 years um, there was a Renaissance artist famous artist named Leonardo da Vinci now Leonardo was an inventor being a Renaissance person is uh, means that you can do a lot of different a person's talented in a lot of areas so, so one of uh, the areas that Leonardo was uh, was uh, known for was his inventions which were far far ahead of their time you probably wouldn't drive an automobile uh, you know I noticed when I went to one of these museums that uh, he had designed practically every every kind of uh, part needed for an automobile and uh, and one of the things that he designed he was very interested in flight and how a how a, a dragonfly uh, flew and you know they use their back wings for flying their front wings for steering they can go up and down every which way and it's very easy to see that his uh, drawings and what he learned about from the dragonfly uh, translated into a modern day helicopter very much looks like a helicopter so I'm gonna keep shading here one thing I didn't show you at the beginning of the video was um, the tissue paper tissue paper helps too you can uh, you can do some uh, shading you can get some real gradation gradation tonal gradation is your um, your grays from uh, the transitions from light to dark the gray areas right so um, you can do that you can rub it in lightly I don't think I'm going to draw a background with this one I'm just going to try and duplicate what I see in the the dragonfly there's a lot of detail in this in this photo so I'm going to concentrate a little bit on the I've got the proportions fairly well so the proportions are the angles and everything and how does this all fit together in you want to draw all the big areas first so as I've said before you want to block in the masses that was another instructor I had in art college uh, his name was Ted Ted Wachula and he used to say you know block in the masses and so you would you would do all the big areas first so if I was painting this I would use my big brushes first and I wouldn't 
use uh, little details or do little details with a small brush until the very end. That way your um, your painting or your drawing is going to come together a lot more quickly. So I'm just going to look at this dragonfly body and I'm going to do some shading and I'm just going to look at the shapes that I see. And sometimes it helps just to squint your eyes and look where things are very dark. And just don't worry too much about, about it getting too dark because that's what this is for, this kneaded eraser. You're going to go into that afterwards. So I'm kind of doing the dragonfly's face here. And um, you might notice if you, if you look on the uh, internet and you look at pictures of dragonflies, they are iridescent, meaning they're shiny, like a, almost like a metallic uh, cars that you see. And uh, the paint on them, and they're iridescent, and also there's so many colors. There are orange ones. I love these big blue ones. Saw a lot of them this summer, right here on uh, in my backyard or in our backyard, and and I noticed that these the close up of the dragon's uh, fly's tail uh, they're almost segmented and. The colors are just absolutely amazing. So a lot of these, or I see a lot of them when I'm fishing in particular. They're after the mosquitoes. So some of the things, or some of the, uh, the small animals and insects that, that uh, you might view as, as pests, like bats or nuisances are uh, actually very helpful in uh, the ecosystem. They cut down, I don't know if you noticed this summer, but there was probably less mosquitoes because of dragonflies. They are definitely uh, friends of humans. What an amazing, amazing pattern on the dragonfly's uh, tail. And I'm not going to start drawing all the little segments on the membrane here on the, um, the wing until I've got the basic shapes shaded and I can go a little bit darker on here and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, smudge this with my um, Kleenex now you can see that my proportions aren't absolutely perfect you know what don't worry too much about if things look Perfect. I really uh, caused a lot of problems for myself when I was younger when I had to make my drawings and paintings perfect. What happens when you do that is that you destroy, you can destroy the love for what you had for drawing or doing art in the first place. And um, I want you to really enjoy this. I want this. Um, time that you spend drawing I want this to be very relaxing and very enjoyable and you know what if it is your drawings are going to turn out better and because you will just be absolutely happy for the time that you get to sit down and draw that's what it's all about 
taken me a long time, like I say, drawing for 50 years until I realized that it's just something I love to do. Love to be in nature, love to draw, love to paint. Um, I love to teach you. That makes me feel good to know that that somebody is uh, enjoying drawing. And having said that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or send it to, to people that you think might uh, love to sit and draw. Because what that will do is it will enable me to uh, be able to spend more time um, doing this. And I do really enjoy this. Just amazing, the little face on here. It looks like a cartoon character. It reminds me of a... Uh, this face reminds me of um, early Walt Disney cartoons. Mickey Mouse or whatever. It's that kind of face. It's got this little brown nose or dark nose. And it's got a little chin here. I have never looked at a dragonfly's uh, face this close up before, but it's actually got an expression and it actually looks like it's happy. Which is amazing. I didn't think we would be able to see uh, when we zoom in that the dragonfly seems very happy in this uh, this photograph. Okay, so looking at the negative space, it's not quite right yet, but you know what? It's getting getting closer. I can see now that I should have left myself a little bit more room up here. I'm going right off the page, but that's okay. I don't want you to think that everything has to be has to be perfect. There's no really no such thing. It seems like you're perfect already the way you are. It seems like if you looked at this dragonfly, you would think, wow, that looks perfect. It's beautiful. And um, so are you. So, look at the membrane on here. I remember I used to draw, I used to like to draw uh, Spider-Man's face. And I can see that there's these little lines, like bricks or something, details on the membrane of his uh, or of the dragonfly's wings, which looks really cool. If you heard that noise, it's my wife opening the fridge. <laughs> oh, you're pouring yourself some iced tea, I see. Nice. I've got gin. I'm, I'm drinking ginger ale right now. It's fairly warm out today. It's one of the last days of summer, and uh, we're back in school today after a long, long time making. Locally, we have a rescue uh, helicopter called STARS, and it's great. They uh, transport people that are in distress. Maybe they're mountain climbing in uh, 
the mountains and they get stuck or maybe uh, they've been in a car accident or whatever it's just a very very important of our uh, part of our uh, uh, safety and and uh, gets people to the medical care that they need very quickly in an emergency and uh, so we love the uh, shout out to the stars helicopters around here you know personally I know of family members that have uh, that have benefited from uh, their help so you know thank goodness for the dragonfly thank goodness for for Leonardo da Vinci da Vinci for my uh, friends in Italy I know that uh, uh, there may be students in Italy. I know there's there's uh, children in Finland that have been uh, doing my uh, my drawing videos, and also um, I understand Italy possibly from one of my friends there. So, ciao to uh, those in Italy and uh, to uh, to my friends in Finland. I say huva paiva means uh, good day I believe so hello to them also my indigenous friends um, my Yithka friends I say Amba Wastich my good friends Amba Wasteno also uh, to my Cree friends I say Tansi and uh, Blackfoot friends, I say Oki. Hi to everybody. I love the sound of the uh, dragonfly's uh, wings. Sounds just like a like an engine. Kind of similar to the hummingbird. You'll hear them blow past you on the river or whatever, and they uh, they have quite the sound. Very uh, much like a motor. And these eyes are pretty sure they can see a lot better than we can. Okay, so this is the basic uh, shape. Now you can go in and you can do a little bit of indicate. Indicate means just what I said, indicate. Uh, here and there, a few of the, um, uh, the parts of the membrane on the, uh, on the wing. So for that, I would sharpen up your pencil. It's always good to have a very sharp pencil anyway. And move this over here. I'm using natural light and the sun's going down. It's about 6.30 so uh, I'm starting to lose a little bit of light. So what I'm going to do is um, you can see the photo that I'm working from and you know what you could pause the video on this photo I'll put it on the screen here and if you want to look uh, close up you can do all these little uh, intricate details yes. and my apologies for the light changing on the drawing it's changed a little bit because I'm using natural light and the sun's starting to go down so I was out filming an episode last night of Let's Draw. I was at the Big Rock in uh, around where I live, Okotoks, and the sun was going down really quickly. I was kind of panicking. I thought, ooh, I hope I can get what I need because um, it's a race against time, but I did. It worked out good, or it worked out well. I got some good 
uh, good filming done. So you need great light. Best time to take pictures, I think, is um, always just as the sun's going down. It's kind of called the golden hour. And that's when you're going to get some really good, really good photographs. So remember the kneaded eraser. I'm putting it into a point here, and I'm going in, and I'm just picking out highlights. I see that on the dragonfly, just like if you look at the photo, just put in the highlights where you see them. Keep going back and forth with the highlights and the light until it starts to look uh, like the photograph. Our aim isn't to make it look exactly like the photograph. We want this to feel like a dragonfly and uh, we can even make it look like it's in a little bit of a motion. Motion like by making these lines a little bit blurry, give it some energy. Um, as I always say to my students that say, oh, Mr. Rasprich, you are a realist and you just want us to draw realistically like you. I'm just like, no, no, that's not true. Um, I want you to feel good about your drawings and I want you to be able to draw things accurately, that's all. It doesn't matter if your mark making is loose or um, however, but proportions are important and um, accuracy is important. You want whatever you're drawing or painting to be believable and consistent. It can be consistent. If you do make something consistently uh, bad or whatever, but it's deliberate, people will think that it's intentional. And that's okay, but you don't want to do a bad drawing or a, people to go, oh, that's not very good drawing because um, you know, you want to do something that you feel uh, proud of that uh, but again I'm going to tell you it's the most important thing is that you enjoyed drawing you got a chance to draw sit here I'm doing uh, for my own mental well-being and physical health I'm doing something called uh, yoga now some of you may have tried it but um, it's very important that uh, they say in yoga, thank you for coming to the mat, unrolling the mat, doing something uh, healthy and good for yourself. Thank you for showing up. So that's what I say uh, to you also, is thank you for showing up and doing something you enjoy. Let's draw nature.